but especially when I think of the church of the West, this really proves true to me and feels true to me that we are in this age, the age of the lukewarm. And friends, it is the age of the lukewarm where we come into the place of mixture and we come into the place of compromise. And as God is restoring the altar of the Lord, as God is calling us to return to the Lord, the first thing that he's got to do to his body is he's got to remove the mixture, all the mixture in our hearts, all the compromise in our hearts. See, friends, mixture isn't just the big sins that you think of. You know, and really, theologically, it's not even sound for us to even think that way. Sin is sin. There's not really like a big sin or a little sin. There's sins that damage people more than others. You know, the Bible makes delineation about those things, which I'm not going to take time to teach on. But sin is sin. And so mixture, what does that mean for us today? What does that mean for me and for you? Wherever God does not have our full attention Wherever God does not have our full affection, wherever God does not have our full yes, wherever we are not 100% sold out to the Lord in utter abandonment, there is mixture in our lives, and we have got to ask the Lord to cleanse us and purify us of that. In the town of Laodicea, in the topography of Laodicea, there was a place up toward the left. When you're looking out over the amphitheater of Laodicea, there's a place up toward the left. It's a place called Pamukkala. And Pamukkala, that's the modern term. Hierapolis would have been the ancient term. But Pamukkala is what they call it today. And there are, there are mineral springs there, just like in Pagosa Springs, Colorado, and other places. There are mineral springs there. And the hot water from these mineral springs would run down off of the high place where that was and into the valley of Laodicea. And then, if you look to your right, you'll see Colossia, where we get our book of Colossians, right? There was the city of Colossia, and there was a mountain spring, a cold and refreshing mountain spring from Colossia. And it would run down also. But where they would meet in the middle in Laodicea, actually the ancient Romans believed that vomiting would make you healthy if you were sick. If you were overweight, if you were sick, if you were whatever, they believed that vomiting would make you healthy. And they built vomitariums, places where people would go to vomit in Laodicea. That is what the water of Laodicea was actually known for and was actually used for. And that's why you read in the scripture, if we would read the, the letter to to the church of Laodicea. Actually, some of your versions say that because you're lukewarm, the Lord says, I'll spit you out of my mouth. But actually, it's not a strong enough word. In the original Greek word, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's exactly what the water of Laodicea was expressly used for. And it is the word vomit. I will vomit you out of my mouth, right? The hot water had a purpose, the cold water had a purpose. That hot water's purpose was to bring healing to your body. People still do that today. I'm taking a group in October. We're going to go there and people are going to, you know, heal their, their wounded muscles and everything by bathing in the hot springs. It had a purpose that was good for the body. The cold water had a purpose that was good to refresh the weary person who needed a drink of cold, clear water. But the purpose when they mixed together, the purpose when they came into that compromise, of both of those sources of water was lost and the only thing that was good for anymore was to be vomited out of their mouth. And friends, that is the mixture that we have in the body of Christ today. Jesus said that if the light inside of you becomes darkness, how great is that darkness? If there is living water inside of me, and this living water inside of me is to refresh somebody or to heal somebody or to serve an actual purpose, if that living water inside of me becomes mixed, if that living water inside of me becomes compromised, then what am I good for? That which is supposed to be living water poured out on a weary, dry world world only becomes that which makes them want to vomit Christianity out of their mouth, makes them want to vomit what I'm saying out of their mouth. And so we've got to remove the mixture. We've got to remove anything in us. And friends, the hour demands that we align ourselves. The hour demands, the hour is later than we think it is. And I, oh, wherever I go, you know, some places receive me, some places think, man, when is that guy going to shut up? But wherever I go, I'm a voice crying in the wilderness because that's the calling God just put on my life. 
I, wherever I go, I'm crying out as a watchman. And I believe we need other watchmen. All of you need to be watchmen. We need a watchman nation in the United States of America. We need a watchman company to arise and cry out with our voice like a trumpet. Remove the mixture. Remove the compromise. Because it and compromise where you lose your destiny and identity. The hot water had a destiny. The cold water had a destiny. But where they met in the middle, both of them lost. And their destiny was twisted into something else entirely. And so as God restores the altars, he wants to remove the mixture. He wants to put upon his people the fear of the Lord. And that's the next place we're going to go. These seven spirits of God that are sent out into all the earth are also referenced in Isaiah chapter 11. Turn with me there, Isaiah chapter 11. We're going to look at it briefly this morning. Isaiah 11, verse 1. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And we, of course, know who that is. This Davidic line, this this line of kingship. Of course, that Jesus came from this very line, the stump of Jesse, the branch that grew from his roots, the spirit of the Lord, and that is the first of the sevenfold spirit of God. That's what the Greeks would call the tetragrammatron, or the Jews would call Yahweh or Jehovah, even though they didn't speak Yahweh or Jehovah. We, as new covenant believers in Jesus Christ, our sacrificial lamb who is our Messiah, we say Yahweh, we say Jehovah, but Jews still to this day, they don't say it. They instead say Hashem, which translates to the name. That's exactly literally what that translates to. Because the name is so holy, you don't actually say the name. When you see a Jewish person write God, they will write G-D, because they are reverencing what this exemplifies the spirit of the Lord. And it's also like the picture of the menorah. If you can think of a menorah, not a Hanukkah. A Hanukkah has nine because of the miracle of the oil, the story of Hanukkah. But a menorah has seven branches. And these seven branches go like this, three on one side, three on the other. And in the middle is what's called the shamash. It's called the servant candle. And you light the shamash first. You light the servant candle first. And then you light every other candle. Well, the spirit of the Lord the tetragrammatron, Yahweh, Hashem, the one that is so holy that Jews don't even say his name. They reverence him so much. That is the spirit of the Lord. And it is the shamash, the servant candle that lights every other expression of who he is. Can you say amen? So then there's the spirit of wisdom. So the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. Say wisdom. Wisdom doesn't only mean knowledge and understanding of how to conduct yourself or wisdom in a certain situation. It means wisdom to wage warfare. Isn't that powerful? Wisdom to wage warfare. So these seven spirits of God that are before the throne of God that John the Revelator saw that are sent out into all the earth. If they're sent out into all the earth, that means the spirit of the Lord and the sevenfold spirit of God is with us today. Not only with us today, but inside of you because of the, the miracle of Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.27, that Christ in you, everything in the Old Testament was a type and shadow of him who was to come. And the substance is Christ. That's why we have to have a Christological centered theology. How many know what I'm saying? Apostolic ministry, true apostolic ministry is actually Christocentric preaching, Christocentric living, Christocentric theology because everything is found in the substance of Jesus. Okay, but the spirit of wisdom and understanding is the next one. The spirit of counsel and of might. 